Jay, we're here to talk about that exciting event that uh, occurred in uh, July back in Philadelphia, your international consensus on musculoskeletal infection. Um, we had over, over 800 delegates, right? 890 delegates total, 650 in attendance. Yeah. And uh, Jay had had a previous uh, uh, international consensus on infection that was done uh, five years previously. But uh, he worked this last, it took him two years to get this whole group together. And uh, it really was an amazing group, number one. These were people that they weren't just orthopedic surgeons. Why don't you tell everybody that was there what, outside yeah. of orthopedics? So we had obviously infectious disease specialists, microbiologists, veterinary surgeons, rheumatologists, hematologists, anesthesiologists, and numerous other disciplines. Because as you know, John, and during the meeting, some questions related to their particular subspecialty. Yeah. Because during the meeting, some questions related to their subspecialty. And um, we also had representative from FDA, NIH, and uh, CMS and other payers as well that were there. And industry too. So, and industry. So it really was, uh, it, it really encompassed all, all the uh, stakeholders and what we're dealing with today in, in uh, periprostatic infection, it wasn't just hip and knee either. There was shoulder and spine and other, other areas, but we're gonna concentrate talking on the hip and knee and that's where AUKUS uh, became involved in this. So uh, what we did uh, five years ago, uh, the ORF, Orthopedic Research Education Foundation, uh, supported the uh, publication and this, this year, uh, AUKUS and ORAF from grants from the two organizations uh, the, are, are the ones who uh, supported uh, getting the actual document together from the hip and knee standpoint and the general standpoint. And um, we'll get into that here in a minute. But the Delphi consensus, uh, you want to just talk a little bit about that just for a mi uh, sure. minute for people to understand how thorough it is? Sure. I, the detail of uh, how this was conducted is in the Journal of Arthroplasty publication, but briefly, as uh, John says, it was a Delphi consensus process, which includes multiple steps, including ch selection of the delegates in the first place. How do you decide on who should be coming to the meeting, who should be contributing? what the questions are, how should the questions be formulated. Asking the question one way may get another answer than the other. Then a uh, review of the literature in a systematic fashion to make sure that no stone is unturned and all of these literature and publications are reviewed and uh, summarized. And then there's of course the whole process of writing the documents, editing them, then the face-to-face uh, -face meeting where we go through them the day before make any final uh, adjustments in the recommendations or the questions themselves. Then there is the fun part of voting, as uh, you recall, yeah. and sometimes very passionate discussions were conducted and some of these, everybody who had the passion, they just basically wanted to do what's right for the patients. And of course, it's called consensus because not everybody's gonna agree on one question. So let, let, that's the most fun thing now. I, I, we should take a poll of you watching this and, and uh, you figure out how many how many questions we had? How many questions did we have total? Total of 652 questions. 652 questions. How many times did we have 100% consensus? Was well, there one? Oh, no, there no, was. Uh, hip, hip and knee, we had a few. But the other disciplines, interestingly, there is many questions where they had 100% consensus. But I would say maybe 10 to 15% of questions where you reach what we call unanimous. Uh, but majority of the time, they were strong or very strong. And only very few out of that 600 uh, odd questions did not pass consensus. Right. But there, a lot of times it would be 80, 20. What, what, what's considered very strong to just give an Anything idea? above 75 percent was considered very so, strong. That's how we are as orthopedic surgeons and that we're never going to agree with it, everything. And, 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 and that's what the whole purpose of this uh, Delphi process is, is to get to a, a certain percentage to say that we can at least agree that in general this we can agree on this to, to some point. It's okay. not that saying that 100% of people agree on this. And I think that's the real important thing is people read these documents that they understand that there were people who disagreed, but we actually put those votes down there. Yep. The other thing to show you how seriously uh, Jay and uh, Thorson and the moderator took this is it took us 20 minutes 
to make sure that the counts, we did this all on uh, yeah. electronic counting, to make sure that the counts were coming through and that people were doing what they're supposed to do. This, you know, this, you'd find it hard to believe, but I found that very interesting. I'd never, I participated in the last one, but I had forgotten. But it's, you have to really be very careful, otherwise you have garbage in, garbage out. And Absolutely. Jay, I, I give you guys unbelievable credit. The other thing, you have to realize, especially in this day and age, the beauty of this system is now people were able to online send poor Jay all these emails and to, to bring up the discussions in that. And I think it was even a better process than five years ago, yet there's about, gosh, the amount of data that we went through probably was five times what it was because we've learned so much more about it, yeah, correct? Yeah, that's true. And there were more issues to discuss in this time. There was obviously the social media and also the, during the face-to-face -face meeting, we had the ability to receive these emails, implement the suggestions, but as you, as you saw uh, the process, John, it was a very engaged process. Everybody was there. They really uh, knew exactly why uh, this issue and this mission was important. They contributed immensely to this whole process. And the publication that's out in Journal of Arthroplasty, and thanks to Journal of Arthroplasty and to John for making that available to our membership, I strongly, strongly advise that uh, you access those, read them, they will make a difference to your practice. They have already made a difference in my practice. And in this situation, uh, in this circumstance, when we don't have evidence beside, behind everything we do in orthopedics, consensus is as good uh, in getting us to providing uh, the best patient care we can at this point. And you can go right on your, I, your, your smartphone today. You can go right up against the uh, reader and get it downloaded there. You can see the entire 57 questions with the editorial. Um, they're, all, they're all there and they will be coming out uh, within the next month or so in print volume, but you have it all online for yourself now. The other thing I, I find that's very interesting about this, and I told this to Jay, and uh, I think in the publications, those of us who helped him with the editing really wanted the, the references, are, there are all the up-to-date references that anybody, if they're trying to look up any area on infection, can go to one of these questions and they can get a reference search right there for seeing what areas they want to study or what areas to look at to try to help. And I've already sent people to that uh, in the last two days, especially young investigators or anybody interested in it. Or if you're just seeing a patient and you want to know about a specific problem, you go to that question, you could go and see the two, there, some of these things only have one or two references in the literature. Yep. But I guarantee you they will be in that, in that document, yeah, Jay, and you deserve uh, well, all the credit for that. I mean, I, you know, John, you were involved in the last two or three months, how much of work has gone into actually even the final edits required numerous, numerous yeah. hours of reading every single line yeah. to make sure that no error was made. Yeah. We hope that there are not many errors. If they, uh, with a document of this volume and this size, naturally there are going to be some errors. We hope yeah. you'll forgive us for those but we've tried to do our best to try to create a document that will serve us on a daily basis in our clinical practice and providing good care for our patients. Yeah. The, the only other thing I'd like to say is if you see Jay around this week, really go up and give him a good kudo because this was really a, a monumental task. Um, his passion for infection has been there. All of you know he's written probably 100, over 100 articles on infection, but uh, this, uh, is really selfless work and uh, uh, we appreciate yours and Thorson's and Thank everybody's you. involvement in orthopedics appreciates it I know AUKUS appreciates it ORIF appreciates it that's why we wanted to put our money toward toward this uh, we think it's a high value to those who are practicing in arthroplasty dealing with a really difficult problem of infection which we still haven't gotten to the bottom line on so and thanks a lot for that thank you Thorson and I would like to thank the uh, leadership of AUKUS OREF, in particular Dr. John Callahan, for their generous support of uh, providing a grant that would allow us to publish the material and make it available free of charge. Yeah. And thank you for your uh, friendship as well. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.